Okay, so this is my neat and nice job. Okay, I just have got, uh, I just left the ESC cables out, this additional connector that I will put on. Uh, maybe I'll just install a GST. I run the cable for the UBC from inside because I'm gonna install my receiver right here inside. Okay, so everything will be connected from this side. All right, the servo cable, and then we will put the cables inside later. For now, let me show you. Uh, how to connect your ESCs to CC3D, uh, this is Mini Atom, CC3D Atom, and how to connect your CC3D to your uh, receiver. After we have made connections, we will install the CC3D inside the quadcopter, we will install the receiver inside the quadcopter, and our next step will be to program the radio and then program the CC3D flight controller. Once we have done the programming of both the radio and the CC3D, then we will add the uh, propeller adopters and propeller. And yes, we're going to go for our very first flight. So stay with me, stay with me. We are only a few steps away from flying this little fast beast. So first thing, let's connect the CC3D to the ESCs. I will highly recommend that you go to openpilot.org or Wikipedia or Wikipedia of uh, the Open Pilot. Download the user manual for the CC3D and study the user manual thoroughly in order to learn all about the CC3D flight controller. For the connections, of course, I'm going to describe it here. Uh, one more thing, some people believe that it is better to run uh, to flash the CC3D with clean flight. Well, I don't mind. Go ahead. If you think the clean flight will make it run better, do it. If you think uh, the CC3D's original firmware will make it better, do it. I mean, whatever you like, you can do it. But I will go with the CC3D's original firmware. So anyway, according to the CC3D, if you have studied the user manual, this is number one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four is like clockwise. So if I move this here on the camera orientation, one, two, three, four. Am I right? Yes, one, two, three, four, okay? So accordingly, once you have figured out which one is ESC one, two, three, four, let's start connecting. This is ESC one, okay? And if you look at the CC3D, let me zoom in here. If you look at here, I hope uh, camera, I cannot see very clearly, but maybe this angle, you can see one, two, three, four, the numbers are printed here, and also the S, S means your uh, upper pin is the signal pin, okay? Upper pin is the signal pin, uh, middle one is the positive and down is the negative. This is how everything works, I believe. So I uh, study the user manual once again. Now according to one, two, three, four, we're gonna connect the ESCs making sure that the uh, signal cable stays up. So this was my ESC one, all right? I'm gonna simply making sure the signal cable stays up, connected to my CC3D number one port. Okay, there is an arrow here on the front. This will stay uh, point to the forward of your quadcopter. Okay, so accordingly, this is number two and uh, making sure signal to signal, negative to negative, connected to number two. This is your number three, connected to number three. Number four, even the dumbest person know where it will go. All right, that's it. Okay, now, here comes the other part. CC3D comes with this kind of uh, noodle cable. All right, lots of noodles, colored noodles. First thing you wanna do is to insert this connector at this side, let me zoom in. Basically, even the dumbu can do it. Basically, you're not gonna miss it this long this sort of wide connector will fit only in one place uh, given at the wider connector here. Make sure you don't force it in any way or in a hurry, okay? Do not force it in a hurry. 
because inside the CC3D there are some really really tiny pins that are gonna connect to the tiny pins on this connector if one of those pins are bent you're gonna have lots of trouble later because it's really difficult to actually make that pin straighten out again all right so far so good let me check again the connector sits nicely inside okay now I have to zoom in once again so that we can all see uh, what channels are these alright now if you can see there are multiple colors but one cable is this type with three pins okay black red and white so this is your channel one that is ailerons okay this is your channel one ailerons for Futaba alright but for the JR or Spectrum, this can be a different channel. So consult your uh, radio user manual for Futaba. This is your channel one. Right next to it is the other color, kind of blue color. Okay, this is your channel two elevator. Then next is a yellow cable. This is your channel three throttle for Futaba, channel one J for JR. Then the next cable is the green cable, which is channel four. Okay, this is your channel 4, which is rudder. Next, channel 5 for flight mode, channel 6 for something else or the PID tweaking using the radio. So basically, right now, we are just concerned to use 5 channels. Okay, once again, channel 1, aileron, 3 cables inside, red, black, white. Channel 2 is blue. Channel 3 is yellow. They are just next to each other, one by one. Channel 4 is green. Channel 5 is yellow again. So accordingly, seeing this, I'm going to connect them to my Futaba receiver. Okay, this is channel 1. This is a 3 color or 3 pin cables. Then we have the next one, the blue one. It's going to go to the channel 2. Right. Keep going. Uh, make sure, don't mix it up. Next to the blue cable is a yellow cable. That is your channel 3. Next to yellow is a green cable. It's your channel 4. And the next cable to the green is yellow again. And that is channel 5. All right? That's it. Now I still have, because I'm using an 8 channel receiver, I still have 2 channels. I can connect the black cable to channel 6 and my, um, my servo to channel 7. Uh, but for now, let's just assume you have only 6 channel receiver or 7 channel receiver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the servo to channel 6. Okay, I have connected the servo to channel 6. Accordingly, we will pl uh, program it that way and rest one cable, uh, the black one for channel 6 uh, from the flight controller. I have left it alone. So this is how you connect everything, your flight controller to ESC and your flight controller to your receiver. Now, the next thing is to tuck them in neat and nice, making sure all the cables sit nicely inside. Now, one cable that I did not connect, of course, don't forget, very important, is the UBEC. Because your ESCs provided don't have built-in UBEC, so they cannot power anything. Your receiver will not power. So I will connect the UBEC to Futaba receiver channel 8 or channel B or channel for power. Okay? Basically, you can connect to any channel to power it up, but I have a dedicated channel, so I connected it there. All right, now I'm going to put um, tuck everything neatly inside. Uh, before that, remember, you have a flight controller plate given, but unfortunately, factory didn't listen to me. They made it bigger, square. So what you needed to do is do a little bit of work and cut it down to this way, smaller size. And then you are going to add a double-sided tape at these sides, just like this. Okay, to install the flight controller plate, you are going to prepare it just like this with a double-sided tape, making sure it's a little bit higher and also gives you a vibration damping for your CC3D. Why we are doing like this is because when we are tilting the rotors forward and backward, 
you can see that the connecting rod comes a little bit up in the middle. So we don't want this connecting rod to touch and get blocked by the flight controller plate. That's why we are adding these uh, double-sided tapes. Not only they will help reduce the vibrations to the flight controller, but also they will not touch the connecting rod. Okay, so after installation, double check by tilting that the, the connecting rod is not touching the plate flight controller plate so dual purpose one it will reduce the vibrations eat up the vibrations to the flight controller two it will also stay higher and will not block the connecting rod all right so now it's time for me to go ahead and neatly tuck everything inside including the flight controller okay so let me do it and then we will get back and see how is the finished version looking